D.W. Griffith's A Birth of a Nation is one of the most important films in cinema history, and is considered to be the birth of the American film industry. It's hard to overstate the impact that this film had both on the medium of film itself and on culture as The film was responsible for some major leaps in film technology, including the first scene shot at night by the phosphorus lamp, along with new developments in editing technique and camera movements. But culturally, however, the film carries somewhat of a darker legacy. Even in 1915, the film was met with controversy, showing that the films were protested by the newly formed National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People for its portrayal of black people. Executive Secretary of the NAACP, Mary Childs Nurney, wrote, The harm that it is doing to coloured people cannot be estimated. I hear echoes of it everywhere I go, and I have no doubt that this was in the mind of the people who are producing it. The film's portrayal of black people was so terrible that it was still being used as a recruitment tool for the Ku Klux Klan as late as the 1970s. With a runtime of just over three hours, the film is split into two halves, separated by an intermission. The first half is set at the outbreak of the Civil War. It follows two families, the Northern Stonemans and the Southern Camerons. It shows us their intertwined lives as they fight throughout the war. It's filled with spectacular battle scenes and ends with the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and a defeated South having to face harsh treatment at the hands of a victorious North. The second half of the film focuses on the reconstruction of the South after the war and the glorious origin of the film's supposed heroes, the Ku Klux Klan. The film shows South Carolina just after the war being occupied by black Union soldiers who push white people off sidewalks and are sexually aggressive towards white women. In one scene, a young white girl jumps to her death to avoid being pursued by a black man who is looking to force her into marriage. Black supremacists rig an election by intimidating white voters and stuffing ballot boxes, and the newly elected black legislators are depicted barefoot in the State House of Representatives, drinking whiskey and eating fried chicken. Meanwhile, our hero, Ben Cameron, sees a group of white children putting on sheets to pretend to be ghosts in order to scare black children and is inspired to form the clan to fight back. By the end of the film, the clan regain control of their town from the black oppressors, and on the next election day, they form a line to intimidate black voters and finally restore power. Despite the film's overall message of overt racism, it was still incredibly popular. It remained the highest grossing movie of all time until it was replaced by Gone with the Wind in 1939. It was even the first film to be shown in the White House to President Woodrow Wilson. On a technical level, the film surpassed anything else that came before it. 